What's up hobby friends, my name is Casey and welcome back to another Miniature Rescue. Today we're going to take a look at what is hands down the nicest thing someone has ever done for me in this hobby. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and share what makes you unique in your hobby. I've been working on this channel for almost four years now and there have been some absolutely incredible rescues. Whether from eBay or from donations by the wonderful subscribers of this channel, models have been saved from shelves and cabinets from around the world, and I have been lucky enough to be part of those hobby journeys. I cannot overstate enough how grateful I am that viewers of this channel have been so supportive over the years. Your support through comments, liking the videos, donations, and Patreon have been overwhelming. Thank you for everything, because without you, none of this would be possible. Today, I got six boxes in the mail, and I wanted to share them with you as well as rescue a specific model out of one of them. These packages were sent to me as a donation to the channel from Jonathan L. He told me that he and his wife had been off and on in the hobby, but that recently their time has been diverted to other things in life. And this definitely happens to all of us from time to time. I took nearly a 20 year break at one point before coming back and starting this channel. So I know how much life can just happen in between doing hobby. Now they asked me to take the models in that have been on their shelf for far too long and give them a good home. Play with them, paint them, display them, whatever it is, and give them some life again. And my friends, that is exactly what I plan on doing. Let's take a look at some of these boxes and see what kind of projects we can get ourselves into. I'm truly beyond words right now. I'm so excited to see what we can do with some of these models, and I think there is definitely one model in particular that we can take a look at today. Meet Noodle. Yeah, Noodle. This model was earmarked in a letter I got with these boxes and given the amazing and very appropriate name Noodle. I think today, Noodle is not only gonna get a makeover, but without Jonathan and Isabel knowing it, I'm gonna box this up and send it back as a thank you. With that in mind, I wanna make this model fun and worthy of his excellent title. I have painted one of these before, but that was a long time ago and it was more of an up job than a rescue. So in this case, we're gonna to have to come at it a little differently. The first thing we're gonna to need to do with old Noodle here is give him a bath. Once he's nice and clean, we can take a look at the model and clean him up a little bit. I'll be using an X-Acto blade. I'm gonna make sure that the model is free from any mold lines and bits of plastic left over from the sprues. The tail bit also needs to be reattached, so I cut off the glue and get down to bare plastic. A little bit of plastic glue and these will melt together and hopefully be a clean join. From there, Noodle needs to be primed, so I ready my airbrush with some Badger Stino Res Black and gave him a good coating. Then I left him overnight to dry. In the meantime, I can work on a base that I think will work very well for this model. I start by cutting down some cork, making sure that the model will still be able to fit on top properly. Then I use some super glue to stick down some random bits of rock and rubble. Once the main pieces are down, I use some PVA to glue down some sand. That should help tie the bigger pieces together and give us some nice texture on the base. After the primer is dry, I decided to start with a little dark brown through the airbrush. So it'll give us a nice coat of all over dirt. 
Moving on to some green ink, I shoot this randomly around the base to bring in a little more color. The idea is to bring in some earth tones and create that dark foresty vibe for Noodle to live in. He's just gonna be out there on a nice planet living the best Tyranid life he can. I happen to have some fish tank plants lying around and I think they will be perfect to bring out that fantasy foresty vibe. But fish tank plants look pretty terrible if they aren't taken care of beforehand. I like to come in with a little matted down dark green to make them a little more realistic. Follow that up with some browns and purples from below and a spritz of yellow on top. Using matte varnish with inks will keep the shine down and finishing it off with an overall coat of varnish will help keep those colors locked in. Another great way to keep things matted down and more realistic looking are to use pigment powders. They almost always bring in that realistic dirt look and can really help sell the environment. You can also take individual fish tank leaves and just dunk them in the powder to coat them. The bright greens will stay there, but the powder really takes that shine away and leaves a nice finish. To lock all of that in, I use a matte varnish from about a foot away, very lightly, just to lock that powder in and make sure it doesn't blow away. Keeping the moisture level pretty light will also preserve the color and consistency of that powder. Before we tackle Noodle, let me tell you about today's most excellent sponsor, Squarespace. Sharing what makes you unique in this hobby can be difficult. When you post a picture on social media platforms and someone asks you, how did you get that really cool look on that model? You can take your time to type out a long explanation of the ABC steps of how you got there, but that post will eventually be lost in the sea of never ending posts and you'll likely never see it again. Using Squarespace's easy to use custom templates, you can create that mini tutorial in minutes and on top of that, share it directly to any social media page. This week I updated my Squarespace hobby blog by adding a quick tutorial on how to paint caution tubes. It was really simple to set up and share exactly what I wanted in just a few minutes. A little dragging and dropping and it was done. Everyone in this hobby has a unique perspective and with Squarespace you can absolutely share that with others in a very easy and fun way. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch that hobby blog go to squarespace.com slash miniature rescues to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video, now let's get back to Noodle. The first thing I want to do is lay down some purple in the shadows. I want the bones to end up mostly white and brown and the carapace to be a bright purple. So this will be a good first step in establishing that color. Then I decided to follow that up with some white from above. My thought was I could keep the purple in all the shadows and use an oil wash to tint the bones. The browns would darken the white ink and mix with the purple in the recesses, but this didn't exactly go according to plan. Sometimes when we paint, we have an idea in our head. We think that the paint will do one thing, but in reality, it doesn't always work out as we want it. I'm here to tell you right now that that's okay if it happens. It doesn't mean that the model's ruined, only that we need to pivot and find a new solution to the problem at hand. I'm sure you've found yourself in a position like this. Just let the paint dry and come at it from a new angle. There's nothing we can't undo by just continuing the painting process and moving forward. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. After letting the oils dry, I decided to paint the skin and bones in a more traditional manner, where colors get layered up slowly and more purposefully. I'll start with a brown and work my way up to lighter and lighter layers of brown moving towards ivory. At first I cover the whole model, and as the colors get brighter, I try and shoot from the top down to catch the raised details. When I get to ivory, I'm aiming to get those highlights on the topmost portions of the bones. That way we really get some darker brown in the recesses and you can see the definition in the model. In order to reinforce that, I'll use some burnt umber ink in the shadows. Normally, I tend to rely on oil washes a lot, 
and for the most part that works for me. But every so often, and especially on larger models, it's easier to show lights and darks by placing them manually. In the end, it makes for a much more dynamic model, and there's nothing left up to chance. You never know what that oil wash is going to do. We'll still end up using an oil wash, but only to enhance the paint that's already there, and not as a shortcut. Next up, I paint in the carapace with a reddish brown color that will act as a base layer for some purple. If a little bit of this color oversprays on the surrounding bone, it will act as a shadow and give us a little bit more contrast for brighter layers to come. So I'm trying to be careful, but I'm not too worried at the same time. If you're the kind of person that likes to airbrush a lot, there is one tool that you need to add to your toolbox immediately. Silly Putty is hands down one of the best masking tools out there, and it comes in handy all the time for models like this. Let me show you how it works. I'm gonna start by wrapping the head with Silly Putty in order to get that purple on without overspray onto the other parts of the model. Using a metal sculpting tool, I can easily move the putty around and press it into the recesses. The best part about this stuff is that it sticks enough to stay on the model and it doesn't pull up the paint when you take it off. And while there is a little bit of paint that gets left on the putty, I've never had an issue with that paint transferring back to the model when I use the putty again. Seems like magic, it probably is magic. Now that the purple is down, I'm getting more and more excited. The contrast is pretty good with the bone and I like how everything looks so far. Time to start layering up some brighter colors and blocking in the rest of the model. Using a lighter purple, I'm gonna go down the middle of the carapace pieces. Just brighten them up a little bit and add some variety. I'll follow that up with some silly putty on the larger pieces and spray some fluorescent pink as a final touch. This really brings in that bright color and I love how it makes the model look, like it's probably poisonous. For the teeth and claws, I decided to go with a glossy black. I plan on coating the model with a couple of coats of gloss varnish before we move on to washes, so this will take care of protecting the model and making all of that black really shiny. Now that the colors are locked in and everything has a gloss coat, it's time to use an oil wash to bring in more color. I'm going with brownish red for the bones and purple for the carapace. The oil wash will give us a nice layer of color over the top of everything and tie our airbrush layers together. The gloss varnish will help the wash spread over the model easier and make sure it gets into the recesses. This is definitely how I wanted things to go the first time. But instead of using the wash as a shortcut to an end result, it's being used to make the paint look even better. I did a little bit of cleanup on some of the larger flat areas in order to make sure that the brightest colors were still showing through. But that gloss varnish did its job pretty well and kept the wash in the places where it needed to be. At this point, I am definitely feeling good about this model. I almost called it done right here, but there are a couple of more things that we can do to really set this model apart and make it more unique. And I figured, Noodle needs to be unique. It's a named character after all. I started by edge highlighting all of the panels with a mix of that fluorescent pink and some white. Then I went for it on the carapace with the really cool texture lines that you see on a lot of Tyranid models. I started with some ivory lines, glazed some pink over the top, and finished it off with thin lines of white. This gave the texture a lot of layers, and I really like how it makes the carapace look. And finally, I finished off the claws with a nice gradient of pink to bring it all together. Over the years, I've been sent quite a few models by quite a few subscribers. It's always been my intention to get to all of those models when the time is right and make something special with each one of them. I want to take a second to thank not only Jonathan and Isabel, but everyone who's supported this channel over the years, whether through donations, likes, comments, or just subscribing. It's really meant the world to me, and I cannot thank you all enough. Once Noodle dries, I'm packing him back up and sending him back. 
My hope is that he'll serve as a reminder that even though life can get in the way sometimes, painting minis and playing games will always be there when we're ready to come back. Thank you all for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you like something about this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.